government always have a way of manipulating things. Are you getting me? They know how to manipulate. When Labour said they are on, they are going to go on strike, starting from second of August, a day to that time, they roll out about two days to that time. They roll out palliatives, thinking that uh, that alone we we make people happy. But if you believe this government, you can believe anything. Now today, Vision 2000. What happened after 2000? Vision 2010. What happened after 2010? Which Vision 2020? After 2020, did we get anything? Then they are now promising 2050. Another vision for 2050. Now somebody is now rolling out a palliative. Is is putting the 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 the, the cart before the horse. They should have done all this thing before increasing the foil. They know that this thing is going to affect people. They know. Anyway, they try, they try a little bit, but it's not, it's not effective. It's not. Because one, there is a, there is a threat, or let me call it a court injunction. That I had that, and the NSC said they cannot, they have barred them from going on strike. But they can protest. Thank God for people like Femi Falano come on board and say that the NSC have the right to protest. I think that was give them the confidence to do this protest they are able to do. I would challenge them that you are our last hope. If you compromise, your children too will suffer it. Because I saw most of the labor leaders. If you see them, you know that these people are not suffering. Fat with their head big. At this labor, are they really fighting for the masses? They are fighting for their their pocket. I can I, I I stand to be corrected whether they are not fighting for their pocket. Whether these people are not fighting for their pocket. I saw them. I joined them. I joined the rally. But the question I'm I'm I'm, I'm the, my position is look, we have no other country than this Nigeria. Are you getting me? We have no other country. I don't even think about Japa. I have children. Some have graduated, some are still in school. And I've never worked on that government. I'm working, I'm working on my own. Therefore, I know where it, it, it reaches. If I'm talking as a father, I know what, what I'm talking about. You cannot be there because we voted for you, thinking that you do the right thing. But the first thing you did is just to put pains on us. At the time that the rich were stealing the money, according to him, the money of the subsidy, the poor, and the downtrodden and the ordinary citizen, they were buying fuel eh, at the rate of 100 plus. Now you remove the subsidy. According to you, they are no more stealing it. Eh? It is the government now, the federal government now that is stealing the subsidy money now. Because 1.3 trillion has been realized. And now, I now sum it up, sum it up that. It is taking that money of the subsidy from the rich eh? and using that same money again to enrich another rich set of politicians. Because if the legislators would take 70 billion, only them, about 500 of them, 70 billion, and now you want to go and give to how many million of Nigerians? 15 million or thereabouts. You want to go and give them a policy, eh? uh, 500, uh, 500 billion according to you, and you are breaking the 500 billion down to different pieces that will not augment for anything. If you are a leader, and you go to places and you can't come in to your own country to use the resources that you have in your own to improve your country, it means something is wrong somewhere. And as you reduce the board, the coaching, uh, uh, the board uh, coaches, we have five uh, coaches on the sideline. And they say they have one uh, person at the head coach. 
and those who are not making a positive impact. 